What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios and today I'm going to show you how to bin off those Games Workshop technical paints and make some much more realistic and interesting looking Mars themed bases. So if you've seen my recent Instagram or Twitter posts, you may have noticed that I've finally settled on a new army project. After a while of testing various colour schemes across various different armies, I finally settled on a little bit of a childhood dream and I'm going to do myself a proper Gene Steeler Colt army. I've always loved the Gene Steeler Colt aesthetic and I'd say even more so with the current range of models and that more of an industrial mining theme with things like the Ridge Runners, the Atalan Jackals and those big meaty Goliath trucks. The fact that they're pretty awful in the game currently doesn't really bother me and if anything actually the fact that they're not performing at tournaments does kind of appeal to me because I do like to be a bit of a special snowflake. Now before I'd settled on a colour scheme for them I already knew a good idea of what basing scheme I wanted to use. Having recently painted up a tabletop standard Admec commission for a friend of mine and used the Mars themed basin for that, it's something that actually grew on me quite a lot. Wasn't a massive fan of it before, but I think in the right places it can look fairly striking. The only problem however is that I find that using these Games Workshop technical paints, whilst it is very very easy, does tend to look a little bit flat and actually not all that interesting. So I thought for my Jeans Dealer Colt I wanted to bring in some of those more industrial mechanical elements that you'd actually expect from the galaxy's biggest forge world. So a great natural starting point here is the Games Workshop Sector Mechanica spaces. Unlike a lot of the resin bases you can get, as these are plastic moulded they actually have some lovely depth to the detail. I want to add a little bit more height however so I am going to chop up a 28mm Sector Mechanica space to use as a bit of a ruin. Carefully cutting out a section of the base, I won't worry too much about the edges as I want them to look a bit rough and twisted. I'll then use some plastic glue to stick this section down and then grabbing out my sprue goo, I'll push a load of this into the gap underneath. If you don't know what sprue goo is, then it's where you take a few sections of sprue and drop it into a pot of plastic glue like this Tamiya Thin. The glue dissolves the sprues and then it forms this lovely goo-like substance which is great for gap filling. By adding this it will also serve to strengthen the bond and keep that added section nicely bonded to the base. To add a little bit more visual interest to the base I'm going to add some pipes coming out of that raised section. Grabbing out some 2mm styrene rod, I'll cut down a couple of short sections of this and then using a craft knife I'll cut the end to be at an angle. This gives more of an impression of the pipe having been broken. To hollow it out I'll grab out my trusty pin vise and just drill a few millimetres into the end. Now as the sprue goo does take a little while to fully dry, to glue these rods in I can actually just push them into that still wet goo. The sprue glue will also bond with the styrene as it is a plastic and it will hold it in place nicely. Now that's the main parts of the base constructed but I do want to add in some rock and rubble like textures. Grabbing out some super glue and some modelling sand I'll add this around the raised section of that base, nicely disguising the joins. I will make sure to leave a few blank sections though, particularly at the front of this base as we do want that original base to be showing through. We want to see all those industrial elements still. So now it's time to get some paint on it. To prime this base I'll use my usual Vallejo Surface Primer Black applied through my airbrush. Most primers will work here but when dealing with metallics as we will I prefer to keep them as dark as possible so I'll tend to lean towards a black rather than a grey. And speaking of metallics for the main industrial looking sections of this base I'm going to use the Vallejo Metal Colour Magnesium. Again I'll apply this using my airbrush as it just applies so smoothly. I'm not going to leave it straight silver though so it's time for some washes. I want to start off by putting some colour into the metals and if this is metal work that is subject to these sorts of weather conditions it's going to be pretty rusty. 
Grabbing out some of AK Interactive's rust streaks, I'll apply this pretty liberally to all of those main metallic areas on the base using an old synthetic brush. This is an enamel paint, so definitely don't use your nice expensive sable brushes for this. It can ruin them. After giving it about 20 to 30 minutes to dry, I'll then return to it with a cotton bud dipped in white spirit. The white spirit will cause the paint to reactivate so that I can then remove the paint that is sat on all those higher areas, meaning that our rust effect will build up in all of those recesses, exactly where it would if this was in real life. I will make sure that I use nice and gentle dabbing and rolling motions with this so as we don't damage the paintwork underneath. Once that is all dried, I'll then mix up a wash using the Abtalung 502 black oil paint. I've kept this one relatively thick just to strengthen the effect and I'll apply it to all those recessed areas again. After giving this again about 20 to 30 minutes for the white spirit to evaporate off, I'll then go back in with the cotton bud dipped in white spirit and we'll remove the wash from all of those raised areas, leaving some nice dark rusty shadows in all those recesses. To add just a tiny bit more colour into the mix, I'll grab out some Nylac Oxides and just lay some of this down into selected recessed areas. Try to keep this fairly subtle as it can become pretty overpowering. For the rocks and rubble, I could just paint these various shades of orange, but I do want to do something a bit different for this. So I'm going to give these the feel of some nice dark igneous rocks before I start laying down that stereotypical Mars dust. I'll start off with a base coat of Abaddon Black and then grabbing out my trusty dry brush, I'll give all of these areas a pretty decent dry brush in using Citadel's Dawnstone dry paint. And now it's time to add that iconic red Mars dust. To do this, I'll be using a couple of the Vallejo weathering pigments that are absolutely perfect for a job like this. Initially, I want to start with quite a deep red pigment, so I'll start with the Burnt Sienna. Applied using a dry, and large brush. I'll be pretty liberal with this and apply it all around that rocky area. Don't worry about getting it on the metallic areas as we do want to get some dust onto them, but just make sure you don't absolutely cover the metallics with it. Once that's done, I'll return to the base with a real soft brush like this AK Interactive Weathering Fan Brush and gently brush off the excess pigment. This works to spread the pigment, but can also help to clean up all those metallic areas if you've got too much on them. Now I want some variation in tones, so I'm also going to grab out some of the Vallejo Old Rust pigment and apply it in much the same manner. As this is quite an orangey pigment, I will be a little bit more sparing with how it's applied and I'll focus mainly on the middle of the rocky areas and let some of that burnt sienna show through on those edges. To fix these down initially, I'm going to use some airbrush thinner. Whilst the real strength for these pigments is the dusty look, for this first application I actually want to flatten them down quite a lot to give me almost a base coat. The airbrush thinner works well in this regard as although you do lose the dusty look, it fixes those pigments down really solidly. With the first layer of pigments fixed down, I'll then return with the old rust again and I'm going to apply a lighter and more targeted coating using a smaller brush. This is where that dust effect is going to really come back in. After tidying up the excess with that soft brush again, I'll then return with some clean white spirit and use this for the final fix in. I find that white spirit actually helps to keep some of that dusty look while still fixing those pigments in place. Now whilst I wait for all that white spirit to dry, I'm going to add some sewage coming out of those pipes. This will give the base just a little bit more colour variation, make it look a little bit more interesting. Mixing up some Typhus Corrosion and Nurgle's Rot Technical Paints, I'll apply this at the mouth of the pipe and then again around the recesses where the pipes would drain into. To really sell the effect though, I'm going to make another mix using considerably more Nurgle's Rot than Typhus Corrosion, but also add in some of the AK Interactive Still Water. This is a water effect that's normally used for diorama building, but will work perfectly to give this sewage a nice glossy finish and to really look like some 
disgusting bodily fluids. And with that done, it's time for the finishing step that all bases deserve, a nice black base rim. You do need to be a little bit careful with these Sector Mechanicus bases. Due to that recessed detail, it can be quite easy to let the brush slip into these. So keep a nice straight brush and nicely thinned paint and you'll be golden. And there we have it, a nice grim dark Mars themed base. I think what I like about this style of basin is that actually it does still keep to the dusty feel of what you'd expect from the Red Planet, but it manages to bring in all of those mechanical industrial elements that you would expect to see on the galaxy's main forge world. So what do you guys think of this method for making Mars themed bases? As we've used the pigments to really get the colours that we wanted and the theme, you could use these with any number of different basing elements. So you could go back to using your crackle paints and maybe a bit of cork to really keep to that desert theme as opposed to the more mechanical look that I've gone for. Let me know down in the comments below if you would have done anything differently or if you can think of any particularly good uses for this type of scheme. Now, if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you may have noticed that I've actually not posted anything since my Space Wolf video. This is because I've had to take a little bit of a enforced mental health break with balancing a full-time job, things at home, and the editing and filming of these videos. It got a little bit too much for me. The Space Wolf video and the Sigval video before each took approximately 40 to 50 hours to actually film and edit which if I was looking for weekly videos would have been more than I was doing during my full-time job. I am back now however and I've got some fairly exciting plans. The first of these is my new Discord server that I've set up with some help from Kev over at the Immersive Worldcrafter YouTube channel. By creating this Discord server it's our intention to provide a nice supportive community to anyone wanting to learn to paint in the grimdark style or if you just want to share your work. It was never our intention to build up a Discord server just to support our own channels, so we are welcoming any other content creators to join in and to share your knowledge. As long as it fits within the grimdark aesthetic, you are more than welcome. I will provide a link for the server down in the description below, and I'll also be including a couple of links to some of the products that I've used in this video. These will be affiliate links for the awesome guys over at Firestorm Games. So if you want to support the channel, any purchases made through those links will provide a little bit of a kickback just to help with the working costs. So thanks for watching this video guys. I really hope you got some value out of it. And remember, if all else fails, spray it black and start again.